Hey guys, it's Coach Dan here, and this is going to be the first video in a three-part series within the SolidWorks tutorials where we're going to build like an FTC drivetrain in SolidWorks. So this is going to be pretty helpful for you guys who are starting out SolidWorks. Um, a lot of the time, the first thing you're going to be doing in robotics for FTC is building a drivetrain that can, you know, drive around and you can build on top of to complete, you know, the tasks within the game. Um, so being able to create the drivetrain within SolidWorks is very important. So what we're going to be doing to create it is we're going to be following the Rev Robotics Mechanism Drive Kit. So there are a bunch of different uh, companies out there, um, Tetrix, Go Builder. Actobotics and Rev Robotics, um, and a lot of the times you're going to have a kit of parts associated with one of these uh, companies. So what we'll be doing is we'll be following the Rev Robotics um, Mechanism Drive Kit. Uh, they have a documentation which I'll pop up very soon, and I'll show you guys. Uh, you can just follow along with that Mechanism Drive Kit. Uh, if you have another drive kit, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to show that specific one. Um, but for the purpose of this video, we will just be using the Rev Robotics Mechanism Drive Kit. Um, so if you do have another one, the skills are quite transferable. So you can just watch these, uh, watch the video, um, and you can you know gauge how to connect different pieces together. Um, and then after that, you can do that and you can apply it to your own specific uh, drivetrain that you're using. Also, you don't have to follow like a tutorial or any uh, specific. Uh, set of instructions for your drivetrain. Um, a lot of the time, if you're a rookie team, this is quite helpful. But if you're kind of more advanced, a second or third year team, you may want to build a custom drivetrain. Or you can use basically the mechanism drive kit as your starting point and adjust it a little bit to suit your own needs later on. So without further ado, uh, let's go to the screen and we'll pop open the drive kit. Okay, so I've got my screen here. And the first thing I'm going to do, we'll close that notification. Um, as I'll open up my Internet Explorer, I'm using Microsoft Edge. So I'll open up this kind of documentation here. So if you're not familiar with this, this is Rev Robotics documentation. If you have the kit of parts, this is actually very helpful um, because it'll explain a lot of different things. So this is the 15 millimeter build system doc um, and it's got introduction. It's got a bunch of different subheadings. What we're gonna be doing is we'll scroll down to build guides and this is where you can build a bunch of different drive chains. What we'll do is we'll follow the mechanism drive kit one. So you, you can see if I close that, there's a lot of different robots you can make. Um, we'll use the mechanism drive kit one. The reason being is this is one of the most common drive kits. Uh, a mechanism drive kit in general, um, it's quite it's quite handy to have um, if you're an FTC team. So basically, the way it's going to work is there are three um, kind of sub assemblies we have to make. So we have to make the ultra planetary gearbox first, the drive rail, and the final assembly, putting everything together. That's why this kind of mini series is going to be three videos within the main. Um, SolidWorks tutorials. So in this video, we'll be learning how to do the ultra, planet ultra planetary gearbox. In the next video, we'll be doing the drive rail assembly. And then finally, um, the third video of the series will be the final assembly. So the way we'll be doing this is if I can click on the first mini assembly we'll make in this video, this is essentially what we're going to be doing. So you can see how there are pictures here um, and they have, you know, descriptions describing what's going on. Um, we're going to be following this whole thing from top to bottom within SOLIDWORKS. So if you were kind of in your own robotics room or you know upstairs in the library for us, um, what you'd be doing is you take these pieces and you put them together physically. But by doing it in CAD first, um, it's going to give us a better idea of how to build things and then we can also use that CAD file uh, for future purposes and our drive chain can be used in a CAD file. So before I open SOLIDWORKS, an important question you may have is, well, how do I use the parts and pieces within this assembly? For example, if you scroll down, you need first this ultra planetary mounting plate and the HD hex motor. Where do you get all of these parts and pieces from? Well, I'll explain that to you now. So I've also got um, this part open, right? So to open this, to open this part, all I did was I clicked on the HD hex motor um, and then you'll be taken to this kind of screen. Now this screen, it doesn't really matter which screen it is. You can open any part or piece, right? Rover bikes have a lot of parts and pieces. And you're going to scroll down, you're going to scroll down all the way, and no matter which part or piece it is, at the end you're going to have this CAD heading. Under the CAD heading, you have the complete Rev Parts Library. And this is pretty self-explanatory. This is basically all of the Rev Parts created in STEP files or CAD files. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to download this. So we'll hit it, we'll let it download. Shouldn't take too long. Um, within this, well, what we'll see now is there are going to be a bunch of different files for all of the parts that Rev make. And even if you have kind of, for example, a Tetrix uh, kit of parts, 
Go Builder, uh, whatever it is, Actabotics, all of those companies will supply a Rev parts library, or not Rev, so if you have an Actabotics, it will have an Actabotics parts library. So because we use Rev um, within our team, that's our main build system, uh, I'm just gonna show you how to download their parts, but it's quite, uh, the skills are interchangeable. So you can just move on to um, a different parts library um, and you can find it there. Okay, so as you can see, um, my download's been completed, but I'm not gonna open the file here, so I'll close the download within Microsoft Edge and I'll go to my Windows Explorer or you know the library that I've got and I'll go to Downloads. So as you can see, this is where the zip file has been saved. So I'm gonna extract all of the files. So I'll extract the files and you can choose where to save it. Um, to be honest, I'd rather not worry about where to save it at the moment. Um, I'll just let it all extract and we'll go into the file. And as you can see, we have all of the pieces all here. So these are all individual rev part files. So they're compatible with SolidWorks. As you can see, if I was to click one of these, it open within SolidWorks. So we have no dramas here. And you may be like, well, how do I know which part is what? Well, as you can see, every part is labeled with its own number. So Rev 211005, that's a, that's a specific part. So if I go back to the Rev build system, our documentation, uh, you can see the first part that we're gonna need is the whole uh, ultra planetary kit or the assembly, right? Um, and within this kit, we'll see that we have a bunch of different parts here that all have Rev files. So you need to import this Rev 411291 it's not too hard to find because you can kind of scroll down. You can see 41, we're within 41, and we're within 1291, which is this one here. So uh, it's quite simple because all of the parts are numbered, and you just have to see which number it is, and then you'll see that part exactly within um, the file. So, what I'm going to do, just for organization's sake, I'm just going to clean up a little bit where I save this. So, if we go back to my file explorer, We'll see how this works in SOLIDWORKS, but it's good to save all of your library um, in a system where you know it. So for me, I've got it in my SOLIDWORKS file. So I can close this now, and we are taken back to our documentation. Okay, so before we actually start combining all of these parts in SOLIDWORKS, it's important to understand what we're physically supposed to be doing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down to the instructions, and this is essentially a motor. So we're gonna need to assemble uh, two of these motors, um, within SOLIDWORKS and the way we assemble them is we have the main motor which is this part here we're going to attach a mounting plate to it and then we have a bunch of cartridges that need to go into it so uh, it's quite simple after we have this is the completed motor once we put all of these screws in um, that piece there and then we're going to put just this mounting plate onto it um, so I'll show you how to do all of this in SOLIDWORKS but the way we do this is we take out this part here, so you can see, attach the ultra plane mounting plate to the HD hex motor. So we'd import the HD hex motor, which is Rev1291, into our assembly file in SOLIDWORKS, uh, and then we'd also import the uh, mounting plate, which is this bracket here. So once we take our mounting plate, Rev4116071, and then we'd make them in a certain way to combine all of this. So this is quite like a lengthy process. Um, and the thing is, because this is such a common part or piece, Rev have actually assembled already a file for us with this done. So if you go here, this is essentially the completed motor, right? It doesn't have the outside mounting bracket on it, but it's got the whole, all of the cartridges on it and it's got the final um, output. So all you need to do is import this number here and then it's gonna be completed for us. So without further ado, let's go to SOLIDWORKS and let's see how it's done. So I've got my SOLIDWORKS open now and I'm gonna open up a new assembly file. This should take uh, a little bit of time to load but not too long, hopefully. So I'll be flicking between the documentation and SOLIDWORKS to show you how it's done. Uh, you can have this on a separate screen or you can have you know all three tabs open. Um, it shouldn't really matter either way. So uh, because I've got now my assembly open, uh, it's gonna ask me what part do I wanna import first. So if I go back here to my documentation, you can see here the first part that we'd need to import is the actual motor. So if you want to do all of this individually, you can. But there's a neat trick here. Because Rev have already supplied a file for us, if we can find this file here, we'll see that we can just import the final product. So this is only in this tutorial where it's really quick uh, because it's such a common assembly within um, Rev where they just supply it for us. So we'll go to SOLIDWORKS, uh, we'll go to parts, all parts already uploaded. 
And you can see at first it may say like there's nothing within here, but that's because um, we've selected you know all files. So let's select all files and we'll see everything is here. So let's go back to the documentation and find the correct rev number. So we'll go here. And because we're using this trick, we're gonna find the rev number rev-41-1600. So let's go down to 41 1600, so we're within 21, 41, and 1600 is just here. So as you can see, there are a couple options here. Um, you have all of the parts, which is kind of every individual parts within the assembly, and then there's within two cartridges, or with two cartridges. So with two cartridges, it's basically what we need, because we're only using two cartridges, as you can see. So we're placing the 4 to 1 and then the 5 to 1. But they have the option of three cartridges, uh, which also includes the 3 to 1 ratio. If that doesn't make sense, it does not it's not really important. All you need to do is import the one with two cartridges. So select it and press OK. So this will take a while to import all of your parts. But because this is the first part that's going to kind of enter our assembly, um, it's going to be the fixed object. But we'll change that when it comes to making it a floating object. So while it loads, uh, we'll go back to the documentation and we'll see what we have to do with this. <clears throat> so because it will already be completed, will have up to this step already completed. So if you were to do all of the individual parts and make everything together, you would do all of these steps, but because we've imported the whole object, it should come, we should see this thing now. So after this thing, we have to import the outside mounting bracket and then place it in such a way where it's facing outside. So we'll see how we do that very soon. Let's go back to SolidWorks. It's still loading, but it seems like it's just about ready. Okay, so as you can see, we have our object here. Um, it's a little bit you know, sketchy, but we'll click it and as you can see our object is now fixed So as we move around it's gonna you know glitch out a little bit, but it's okay The reason why it does that is because there's a lot of little parts within this So once again, it's always good to look at your left hand tab and we can see that we have our object here and our object contains a bunch of MIDI uh, Assemblies within it. So it's not really important We can close the objects drop down menu and everything is kind of okay because this is an assembly file, we want to make sure we can move this motor around. We don't want this to be the center of our drivetrain because the center of our drivetrain should be within the final assembly. So we'll just right click this here and we'll float the whole object. So now this object can move around and it shouldn't really have any problems. So we'll go back to the documentation and we'll see what our next step is. So after we um, import our whole motor, the next thing we have to do is align the outside mounting bracket onto the motor. So let's find the correct rev number for the outside mounting bracket. So the outside mounting bracket is this one here, and that's rev 411621. So let's go back to SolidWorks, and let's click Insert, so Assembly, Insert Component. Make sure, so it should already open up the library that we have opened before, all files, and it was 411621. So 41141516621. And that is this one just here. So we'll open this. And this should take a lot shorter because it's just a singular object. So once again, now when it comes to mounting it, if we go back to the documentation, we want the outside mounting bracket. We kind of want the edges to be facing outwards. So it's important to place your object in a way that kind of that helps. Okay. So what we're going to do is we'll place it just here and we'll see what that looks like. So before we start mating things together, what we'll do is we'll just align this kind of where we want it to be. So we'll move this closer here. So to rotate an object, all you have to do is you click like a side, <clears throat> and then you hold the right mouse button, and you can rotate this around. So to move an object, you would use the left mouse, which is left to me or right to you, and you can move it around, and then to rotate it, you use the right mouse or the right clicker. And so as you can see, I've rotated this around to kind of seem like it's going to be aligned up. Uh, we can also kind of zoom this out a little bit and rotate this downwards slightly. Yep, like so. And that's okay. So it's not perfect, but we can see we've got it within the general uh, kind of assembly form. So let's go back to our documentation and see how we need to connect these two pieces. So what I'll do is I'll zoom in now. So as you can see, um, the main thing is we need the inner holes of the bracket to line up with the kind of like the, the little circles holes of the motor. So we'll go back to our SolidWorks and we'll see what this is. So within SolidWorks, what that means is that this hole here, it needs to line up 
with this one just there so just that one so what we'll do and in fact you can use any of the circles so the first circle it doesn't really matter but what we'll do is we'll take this circle here and we'll select it and then we'll take this circle here and we'll press shift and we'll select the semicircle let go and we can now co-incentric make those two circles and we can see that it moved a lot closer to our object and it should be looking a lot nicer because that's done we can now get a better view of this and we can connect our next two circles it's the easiest where you can look at the opposite circles but now it matters which circle will line up with which one because these are now co-incentric made it we now need to line up the next one so we can see the next circle along is this one here so we'll select that semicircle there make sure we just get the semicircle and then we'll move around and you can see that in terms of on the motor that's going to be this circle here so that can be a little bit hard to get just trial and error um, and make sure you've got the right circle to line them up so press shift let go and we'll go and centrimate those as well so as you can see the whole motor moved now um, and at this point as you can see, all of the circles are now perfectly lined up because you only need to line up two different circles together. Once those two are lined up, the whole object should now be correctly lined up. But the one thing that we haven't done is we haven't kind of uh, connected the whole face uh, to each other. So we can see we can still move this in and out. So what we'll do, uh, we just need to now coincident mate these two objects. So the faces are important. Let's take this face here. And let's coincident made it to this face here. So shift, let go, and let's coincident make those two. And that's it, we're pretty much done. Uh, as you can see, the motor now is fully fixed onto the bracket. If I move the bracket, I'm gonna move kind of the whole motor around, which means that we've fully defined our bracket. So if you did this wrong, wait, what may come up is you'll see an error and it'll show you, do you wanna continue? Um, if it shows that, then always kind of click no and try to find where your mistake was. If you click OK, it's going to kind of build your file and it's going to run into a lot of errors. So make sure you don't continue along with the mistake. So we'll go back to our documentation and we'll see whether we've completed it successfully. So as you can see, the bracket kind of just needs to be connected to the motors. For the screws in SOLIDWORKS, there's no need for screws um, because we're connecting things kind of with their faces. So we don't need to worry about the screws. And as you can see, um, it looks pretty good and we seem to have done this correctly so we'll go back to our documentation and the last thing you need to do is it says repeat the steps for four of these motors so within a mechanism drivetrain if I can get a picture of the whole drivetrain um, there are going to be four of these motors so this is one of the motors one two three and four now if I go to our next videos content so I'm just going to quickly show you by the end of next video we're going to have two of these kind of drive rails uh, connected together now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go back to my file and I'm not gonna copy paste four of these the reason why is I'm just gonna copy paste two because we only need two motors once we copy paste another drive rail we'll have four in total by the end of next video so if that doesn't really make sense it's okay um, all you need to do is make sure that you've copied just one of these motors control C and press control V and once we paste it we should have two motors perfectly with their brackets lined up. So finally, always save your work. With large assemblies, as you can see, this assembly file probably already has you know up to 100 parts in it because the motor has all little parts within it as well. Um, so it's always good to save it and you can never know what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna save it within my assemblies and I've already got one that's named assemble one. I'm gonna call it FTC drivetrain. Drive train. That's going to be it for this video. In the next video, we're going to be using these two motors to create a drive rail. Um, you could probably go ahead now and see what you need to do, but the next video, everything should kind of be um, within like the context of this video. So there's not going to be anything new. We're just going to be importing parts and then mating those parts together to collect things together. Uh, so that'll be it. I'll see you guys in the next one.